Okay, welcome to lesson 8.2. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to back up, we're going to talk a little bit about 8.1. Okay, so in 8.1 you saw lots of different notations for functions. And um, we kind of alluded to the main one that you're going to see um, to really make things applicable, and that was um, using equations. And so that's what today's lesson is about, so equations with two variables. So quick recap, uh, in eight, this is actually from 8.1. Um, in 8.1, we saw four different notations or different representations of relations. We saw the chart where you had lists of x's, and then next to them you had the y's that they went to. We had the mapping notation where we started in the domain, okay, and we had arrows that went across to the range, and we... Um, and basically each arrow represents an x going to a y. Um, by the same token, you could graph the points, and so each uh, point represents an x and the y that it goes to. And then finally we had the list, and the list you had ordered pairs where the first number was the x, the domain, the input, and the second number was the, the y, the output. Okay, uh, And I guess in the chart I kind of neglected to say that, so the first column is the input or the domain, and the second column is the output. So we saw all of these notations, and they're really good for understanding the basic idea of what a function is, but the reality is, outside of 8.1, we don't really see these notations very often. We'll see the graphs, but we'll see them in a different uh, 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 connotation. So let's talk about how we really take this idea of function and we really make it realistic for a math class. And that's going to be where we have equations. All right. Now, the equations that we've had before have been solve equations. They've only had one variable in them. Now, they might have had many copies of the one variable where we had to get the variables together, but we had equations that only had x's or only had y's or only had w's. Now, if you look at this equation, we have two different variables in the same equation. Okay, and again, we haven't, that's not completely unknown to us. We've seen that before. But in this case, the equation actually represents a relationship between the two variables. All right. So here's what we do with these. Okay? Um, in order to graph these and to analyze them, what we are going to do is we're going to borrow a trick from the previous. We're going to borrow this chart right here. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a chart. And you could just do an x, y column. Or let me show you a trick that makes it a little easier. Make a third column that's really fat in the middle, like that. Okay? Your x is going to be your inputs. The y's are going to be the outputs. In the middle, what you're going to do is you're going to do the work. So you're going to do 3x minus 2 in the middle. Now here's the really cool part. Okay? There's no right or wrong x's to put in here. You get to make up which x's you want to use. So I would always pick easy numbers. Um, since I'm multiplying by 3, I don't want really big numbers. Um, so why don't I use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And again, the question immediately is going to come up, where did those numbers come from? I made them up. Okay? There's no rule. You can pick whatever x's you want. I would recommend picking ones that make sense and that are easy. All right, now, let's go ahead and do the work here. So this middle column right here will allow me to do the work. So I'm going to take 3 times negative 2, and I'm going to subtract 2. Okay, so let's see. What do I get? 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 2 is negative 8. So I have just figured out that if I put an input of negative 2 in, I get an output of negative 8. What if I put negative 1 in? Well, 3 times negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 minus 2. That's negative 5. If I put 0 in, 3 times 0 is 0 minus 2 is negative 2. What if I put 1 in? 3 times 1 minus 2 is 3 minus 2. That's positive 1. If I put 2 in, I get 3 times 2. Um, oops, sorry. That's supposed to be a minus. Let me erase that. Uh, 3 times 2... Uh, minus 2 is 6 minus 2, that's 4. All right? So if I did this in mapping notation, it's kind of still here. The negative 2 maps to negative 8. The negative 1 maps to negative 5. The 0 maps to negative 2. The 1 maps to 1. And the 2 maps to 4. All right, quickly, is that a function? Well, let's look at all my different x's. If I put, a diff if I put an x in, do I get just one answer? Yeah. And this is why it was so important that each domain value has exactly one range. If I put 2 in, and I wasn't sure if the answer was supposed to be 3 or 7, now I've got a problem. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, this data real quickly. And we're going to talk about the next thing we can do. Once we take the function we turn it into a table, we can then also go ahead and we can graph that data. So let's go ahead and copy this data and go to the next slide. Okay, and let's go ahead and paste that in here. So here's my chart from the previous page. Okay, and I'm going to treat each of these um, rows as ordered pairs. So negative 2, negative 8. So let's go ahead and put a couple numbers up here. Um, I'm not going to put a ton of values on, but let's go ahead and put negative 5 
a negative 10 on the y-axis, and we'll put 5 and 10 up here. Okay, and on the x-axis, I'm only going from negative 2 to negative 1, so I can make these a little bit um, more spaced out. So this will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right, so let's take each of these lines and let's make a point. So negative 2, negative 8. So this top line gives me the point negative 2, comma, negative 8. That's an x, comma, y. So how do I graph that? I go over to negative 2, I go down to negative 8. That's right about there, correct? All right. Negative 1, negative 5, that's going to be right here. Uh, 0, negative 2 uh, is about right there. Okay. Uh, 1, 1 is going to be right about here. And 2, 4 is going to be right about here. Okay, and that's not perfect. But if I did this right, um, one of those is a little bit off. They should line up. Let's go back and revisit this one. Negative 2, negative 8. I'm going to read... I'm going to redraw these. Negative 1, negative 5 is clearly right here. And negative 2, negative 8 actually should be up a little higher than I drew it the first time. All right. And now, if you look at these points, they should line up in order. Now, it's not perfect, but I didn't use graph paper. Okay, so that explains why they're a little bit off. But basically, you can see that they line up. All right. So what did I do? Keep in mind what I started with. I started with an equation, y equals negative 3 times x minus 2. Okay? Oops. I lied. There's no negative there. y equals 3x minus 2. I then came up with a table of values of x's and y's that could all be interpreted as an x and a y point. I graphed those points, and sure enough, if I wanted to finish this, I could actually draw a line up through those points. And it's not perfect, but if I actually did this on graph paper with a ruler, it would be perfect. Okay, So here is an example in mathematics where we're going to take a, an equation, we're going to come up with a chart of values, and we're going to plot those points, and then we're going to graph the line. And this is the main way we can graph anything. Now, right now, I graphed a nice simple line, but I could give you an equation you've never seen before, um, like an x cubed graph, and you could go ahead and make a chart. You'd probably have to do a little bit more than five points, but if you did enough points and then just kind of connected the dots with a nice smooth curve, you would see what an x cubed graph looks like. Okay. Um, now, remember, this column right here, this is something that everybody is going to forget. Where did these x's come from? Well, sometimes the problem will tell you. It'll say, do a chart of values and find the y values for x is equal, and they'll give you three or four values that you're supposed to do. If it doesn't tell you and you know you have to do a chart, you get to make up your own x's. And you can be smart. If you have a fraction in your problem, pick x's that are divisible by that fraction so that your numbers come out easy. Okay? Um, again, it's up to you. You can pick any numbers. Uh, one good thing is don't spread the points out too far um, or put them too close together because you won't get a good picture. All right, let's move on. Uh, special equations. All right, well, those, that equation had two variables, but let's say we've got some other special equations where you only have um, one number listed or one variable listed. All right, so let's think about how these apply um, when we're graphing. If I don't tell you what the y is, and I just tell you x is equal to 2, basically what that means is any point of the form 2 comma anything uh, is on that line. Well, if all you know is the x-coordinate is 2 comma anything, let's draw a little graph here. All right, here's 1, here's 2. Then we get all of these infinite points. Anything with an x, with an x value of 2 is going to line up. So this is actually the equation for a vertical line at x equals 2. By the same token, y equals 3 could be anything of the form question mark comma 3. You can put any x in you want. So you could put 0 comma 3, you could put 1 comma 3, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 3, um, you get the idea. Basically anything including negative a is comma 3. And so this gives us a horizontal line y equals 3. And it's a line so it really should have arrows on the end of it. Okay. So those are special lines. Um, and it's a little counterintuitive. When you have x equals a number, it's a vertical line. You would kind of think it should be parallel to the x-axis, but it isn't. You're telling the, um, the points what their x value has to be, so they all have to line up vertically. Whereas in the red equation, you're telling them, I don't care what your x is, but your y has to be 3. So that makes them all line up horizontally. Okay, So don't get confused. Um, x equals 2, or x equals any number, is going to give you a vertical line. And y equals some number is going to give you a horizontal line. All right. 
So let's review very quickly. If I give you an equation like y equals 4x minus 7, and I say to uh, come up with a chart of values and graph it, you're going to come up with a chart. You don't have to put the middle column in if you don't want to. You're going to make up some x's, and then you're going to figure out what the y values are. You're then going to plot each of those ordered pairs on the graph. If you get a bunch of points, you're going to make them line up. Now, this line actually looks more like this when I graph it. Okay, That's kind of what that line looks like. All right, so that's how you graph a line. For the horizontal and vertical lines, um, you're just going to draw a straight line that's either horizontal or vertical, depending on the value. You just have to think about those and get used to those. Okay. By the way, all of these equations, the x equals 2, the y equals 3, uh, the following screen, the y equals 4x minus 7, they're called linear equations. Linear equations are equations where you only have uh, x's and y's. You don't have any exponents or any square roots or anything weird like that. Um, you usually have two variables, or you can have special ones with only one variable. And they're called linear because, obviously, their equations are lines. Okay? Um, and so we'll talk more about those, but that's ba the basics of equations with two variables. Okay? All right, well, I'm going to thank you for tuning in, and we're going to call it a wrap. Um, tomorrow we will practice... Um, taking equations, coming up with charts, plotting the points, and coming up with the lines. Okay, Hi. and that was Mark. He was uh, sort of participating. That, that would be video. a good question on the daily quiz. So just the people. That yeah. Who who the was thirty seconds? Who was the um, si who was the si who was the silent guest in the video? All right. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in class tomorrow.